to manifest out of your body. You know, if I could just get my spirit to shine. I'm not a son of God until I can get my spirit shining through my eyeballs. I hear my spirit's a really nice guy. Wouldn't it be cool to like meet him? He's so such a good guy, I hear. Too bad he's way out there in Wonderland. So. Too holy for me. me. So you have, you know, the common idea. You have this spirit guy. Who knows where he lives? Right? Like, you've been trying to get a hold of him for years. He doesn't answer your messages. He doesn't write back. He doesn't return phone calls. Right? Your soul is freaking out. It's like, dude, I just need to meet my spirit, you know? <laughs> but we split each other up, and it leaves, it leaves the finished work unfinished. To me, that's what it does. It leaves that finished, ayapupatow, of Jesus unfinished, which means that you have to do it yourself, right? You're still working on your soul. You get your mind all right. But Jesus gave you a new mind. He gave, okay, let me look. Okay, let me look. This is it. Okay, Paul. This is Paulos. The big word, Paulos. Okay? Servant. The word in Greek for servant is doulos, which means slave. Okay? So the apostle Paul, who is no longer Saul, right? Completely changed. How? Devoted love slave. The, the, word, the word is devoted love slave. <laughs> a, a slave, doulos. I mean, it actually means one who has given his will completely over to another. Can I say it again? Paul. A doulos. One who has given his will completely over to another. Have you done that? Is that, is that where your will is? Is that where your free will card is? Is it in Jesus? Because, because that's the true Christianity. You gave yourself over once for all. And you're filled with his goodness. Come on, ho! You can't, you can't rely on your willpower. You can't rely on your sovereign will. Because if your will is sovereign and his will is sovereign, then somebody's lying. <laughs> and it ain't God. Hello! Hello! I know you've been pound, I know it's been pounded into us as Christians all of our lives. You know, it's almost scary. Give up your free will. No! You feel like you're in a Braveheart movie, and, 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 and the other guy's the bad guy. Who really no freedom! freedom. You don't even know what freedom is. Like freedom apart from His will is not freedom. It's it's absolute sin. It's it's ridiculous, right? Oh my goodness! Independence from God. That sounds like a lot of fun, doesn't it? <laughs> no. All right. Let's let's just, okay. Before we jump into Romans one, I just, can I just say something real quick? This is about Paul. Oh my goodness. Let's look at Galatians 1, where he introduces himself here, okay? He says, Paul, an apostle, sent not from men, not appointed by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father. What the fuck is that? Paul was appointed by God. He was commissioned by God. Okay, you remember when Judas died? When Judas died, they uh, they, they, they said, we got to replace Judas with somebody. And so they prayed, and they fasted, and they tried to pump it up. And then finally, they couldn't figure it out, so they just rolled the dice. Okay, uh, that didn't work. All the records didn't work. Let's just roll the dice. And they picked Matthias, right? Now, do you ever hear about Matthias again? No? Maybe historically you find out where he died or something. Maybe they missed it. I'm not saying they missed it or not. But God definitely had his choice, all right? When you look at the Apostle Paul, okay, you got to understand, this guy wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Now, if you're a new believer and you don't realize, like, Titus, Timothy, Philemon, Philemon didn't write Philemon, Paul did. Paul wrote Timothy, Thessalonians, you understand that, right? He wrote all that stuff. Now, not only did he write two-thirds of the New Testament, but you know Mark, who wrote the book of Mark? Uh, who did Mark travel with and learn from? Paul. Before he wrote it. Who did Luke travel with and learn from? Paul. Luke says right at the beginning of Luke 1 that I wasn't even there. I wasn't even an eyewitness. I got the story from eyewitnesses. Did you know that? He thought Luke was an eyewitness story. No, he got it from eyewitnesses and wrote it down. One of which was Paul. He calls Paul an eyewitness. Okay. Book of Acts. Who wrote the book of Acts? Luke, who traveled with Paul. And who takes front stage center... In the book of Acts, Paul. Peter got rebuked by Paul, and Peter himself affirms Paul's letters. James, men that came from James, didn't understand the gospel that Paul was preaching. They wouldn't eat with the Gentiles. Maybe, just maybe, we need to pay attention to what Paul is saying. 
Now, I'm not trying to deify and, and elevate Paul to a place like a Catholic would elevate the Virgin Mary. That's not what I'm trying to do. But what I'm saying is God put something in Paul, all right? Paul so identified with this gospel, this revelation of union with Christ, this revelation that the old nature is dead, this revelation of the new creation, this revelation of what happened to you on the cross. If you don't read the Bible through that revelation of the gospel that Paul preached, you're totally going to get tweaked out. You're totally going to get into a new yourself uh, uh, program, okay? Listen, you've got to understand that in, how important this is, okay? This is what else he says. He says, um, verse 11. He says, I want you to know, oh, let me just read it. This is okay. I got a second drunk. Drunk. There you go. Oh, 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 go, go. This is my, it's your Bible. It's your Bible. It's your Bible. I'm going to read your Bible. I'm going to read your Bible. He said, I want you to know, brothers, that the gospel I preached is not something that man made up. Did you know that a lot of people aren't preaching man-made up stuff? <laughs> it feels very common, especially if you're charismatic. Did you know that? But I certify you, brother, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. I would remind you, brothers, that the good news which I told you is no mere human invention. Oh, for I tell you plainly, brothers, that the good news I preach is not a human affair. For no man gave it to me. Paul did not get this from somebody else. Jesus showed up himself and gave it to him. <laughs> no man taught it to me. It came to me as a direct revelation from Jesus Christ. Oh, and then he goes on to say that God called him from the womb. Did you know that you are called from the womb? You have been set apart. You have been predestined from the womb. It says, but when the time came, for God, uh, verse 15, for God who had chosen me from the moment of my birth and called me by his grace, okay, oh my goodness, and saw fit to reveal his son in me that I might go and tell the good news of him among the Gentiles, then at once, instead of consulting any human being, I did not, as might have been expected, talk the matter over with any human being. Paul didn't go ask permission to go preach the gospel. It wasn't by the will of man that Paul released the gospel. It wasn't even by his own will. He was going out to kill Christians. His will got hijacked. All right? How many of you guys know that your will got hijacked? Your own human will. Paul was not appointed by the authority of man. Jesus did not operate by the authority of man. They said, by whose authority do you do these things? Who's recovering? By whose authority? And listen, he said, I can do nothing. The Son of Man can do nothing by his own authority. You can do nothing by your own will. You can do nothing by your own choice. The human will is an idol. Paul calls it will worship in Colossians 2. It is not about you ascending. It is not about you deciding. It is not about you throwing your effort and your will into something, but your will has been hijacked. You have been possessed. You are a bond slave. You are a doulos. You are a love slave of Jesus Christ. You've given your, you gave yourself over. It's like you can't look to the Lord and say, I'm dependent. You can't, you got to stop looking at yourself as independent from the Lord. you got to understand this. You are not independent from him anymore. You're not just standing here and hopefully one day you're going to meet Jesus. You're connected with him mystically. You're connected. You have you're you're one with him. He was joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. What did I say? What did the word say? He who is joined with the Lord is one spirit with him. Whose spirit do you think is inside of you? Is it your spirit? Whose spirit is God's spirit? Oh! And he wants to scream. He's the one that enables you to scream Abba in the bliss of which you cry because you are filled with the Spirit. Whose Spirit? Your Spirit? Look, we got to relook at all of these things. Whose Spirit are you filled with? Is it your, yeah, if your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, then who is it? Who is it? Is it you that's living in the temple? Or is it God who lives in the temple? Hello? you got to get it, guys. you got to get it. There's a Spirit that's inside of you. Yes, you have a spirit, but it's not yours. It's the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit himself, the person of the spirit. Not just him, but the 